And um, I don't know, I, I think that all of these religions are, are period pieces in the sense that they, they capture the, the interests and, and biases and, and uh, beliefs and morals and such of the people who, who created these holy books. And, and I don't see any, any magic you know, in the Bible, uh, in the Quran, or any of these books that, that leads us to believe that there's, there's real revelation there. Uh, and real uh, science, or real uh, any, any sort of advance, you know, there may be things that they got right, um, but it could have been. And then, and a lot of these things I think can be explained away pretty easily. I don't see any miraculous stuff in there. Um, one example, you know, the the Ten Commandments. You know, God supposedly came down with these tablets or whatever, and they were dropped on the floor and crumbled to pieces. Right? Well, God could have just as easily made you know a diamond-coated titanium tablets, right? And and that's so, <laughs> certainly something that we can do there's today. A, there's always Mel Brooks' History of the World right. Part One. Right? Right. I bring you fifteen, <laughs> tell me. Ten commandments. Ten commandments. Right. He drops one of the one of the three. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but my point is, you know, why why make this out of crumble stone or sandstone or whatever? Why? Wh 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 what kind of craziness is that? Why not make it out of something? You know, especially since this is supposedly the most valuable artifact, religious artifact ever created in, in the history of the universe. Uh, why make it so something that, that would fall apart? You know, that makes no sense. That may be kind of wandering off the question. Wandering <laughs> off the question. Well, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, it, it seems like that all in all, given that if there was any truth to it, it had been distorted over long periods of time by people constantly rewriting it, rereading it, reinterpreting re it, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to all those things. But do you think there's, there's any matter of truth that if God, you know, if, if he existed, if he ever came to Earth, that there's any way that the actual truth of it could have been distorted? Well, you know, uh, we, we have we have Thomas Paine, who was one of the one of the sort of founders of, of the United States. He actually named the the, the United States America. Uh, he argued in his uh, Age of Reason that God would never use a a holy book as a communication device for precisely this reason. And and I think he made a very compelling argument that 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 hasn't been addressed, hasn't been knocked down at all. I think his argument is still rock solid today. There, there's a really serious problem with just assuming that you know the guy who created the universe and he's never wrong. It gives people the idea that they're infallible by proxy. Um, you know, the, people wind up believing that uh, maybe, you know, maybe I don't know everything, but I have this direct phone line to the creator of the universe, and he knows everything. So if I hear something in my head, or I read something in a book that makes sense, uh, and I think it's by him, then I have free license to go ahead and believe that whatever I think is absolutely 100% correct with no possibility of error. Um, this not coincidentally, has led to hundreds of horrible wars throughout the history of the universe because the, when you have two groups of people who think that they've got the immutable truth and they don't agree on what that truth is, uh, you know, then they fight each other for it. I don't see any particular reason to believe that anybody has, uh, has been told the absolute truth. I think the evidence doesn't bear it out. Uh, and the best we can do uh, is examine the universe objectively without these assumptions of something like a god uh, and come to whatever conclusion is pointed to by the evidence. Uh, and so far, as far as I can tell, God isn't it. So, what if it was the fact that, that if there was a god, but he never came to earth in the first place, but somehow his existence was still known? Again, coming back to the How point is it known? That's my question. How how is it known to you or anyone? Well, the way I look at it, there's two possibilities. One, it was just created by ancient people trying to explain the crazy forces they saw around them. Or two, we could go off the crazy belief, you know, the religious people play off of as the God's work is supposedly, you know, so, so incomprehensible, and he can put any thought into your head as he says. So what you're saying is it's not known, it's just a complete mystery to us, and yet you're still willing to say that, uh, you know, that there's definitely a God uh, because uh, either you feel it or you just believe unquestioningly people in the past who've said they feel it. No, I say it because 
I feel that there is some kind of God, but not an intelligent being in the sentient sense that he would send down some, you know, some words to some random people on Earth. How do you know? Some form of God. Because, well, they're still, you know, investigating things that go into atoms. They're still you know, they investigating it. How do you know that it's God? Because some force is driving it, and we can't explain it yet. Some force called God. To an extent, yes. How do you know? How do I know? Yeah, I mean, uh, it you seems know, like you're, you're all giving... you're saying is there's unknown stuff, and I want to call it God. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Well, it has to lead down to something, doesn't it? To the point of creation? Called God? I guess if that... If you want Why? To Why not just say I don't know? Isn't that more honest? Well, I'm using the word God just to explain the fact that I don't know. Okay. okay, so so no, I agree like with you. Leaping to a conclusion, <laughs> is what it's, what it's I agree like with us. you. If God just means I don't know, then yeah, there is an I don't know. Um, you know, I, I find little reason to be interested in that kind of word game. Uh, so anyway, thanks for your call. Uh, we've got a couple minutes left. Um, let's see. Should I cram in another call or yeah, two? Yeah, let's do one more yeah, call. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to make this quick. Uh, we've got Claire in St. Paul. We'll probably take a couple of uh, calls off the air uh, after the show's over, so hang in there. Uh, Claire, are you there? Yeah. Sorry to I'd get you last. on so late. <laughs> yeah, I knew I'd be last. Um, <laughs> so last December, I um, had my friend over and her son, and we were playing on the Wii, and we were just having, you know, a fun time on the video game. And we're also talking because... Her son's really into geology, and we're just talking about random scientific, scientific principles. And uh, we get into the topic of what the definition of theory means, and I tell her basically what all my science classes have told me, all the science books have told me what a, sci what a scientific theory is, and she disagrees with me, eventually telling me that, hey, actually it's just a random uh, speculation. It's not really supported by anything. It's well, just a... It's well, just yeah, there's a two guess. definitions, isn't there? Yeah, which leads to uh, something called the equivocation fallacy. Mm -hmm. Right, right, where they play games with this sort of thing. Right. right. Um, but, I mean, basically in a science sense, when we say that uh, something is a scientific theory, we mean that it's a well-supported uh, explanation for uh, observed facts. Uh, I'm going to put you on hold if you want to stay on after the show, uh, but unfortunately we are out of time. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Kathleen, for uh, being our guest today. Thank thanks you for having John. me. Thank you. Uh, thanks to our great crew, and uh, come on down to Threadgills. Uh, when the show is over, and uh, it was—it's uh, been another great episode. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>